So what about sub-Q DARA? That was, this is the first time we've seen data on the randomized trial. Um, Amrita, you want to tell us a little bit about that trial? Sure. So that was a phase three randomized trial using subcutaneous daratumumab compared to IV um, daratumumab. And a couple key things with the subcutaneous is it's a flat dose, first of all. So they, you know, 1,800 milligrams um, versus the IV, as you know, is weight-based. Second thing was... Um, and obviously, time of infusion, right? Sub-Q five-minute injection versus we're all very familiar with the infusion times for IV daratumumab. Um, and they basically showed equivalency in terms of response rates um, and PFS as well. Obviously, less side effects in terms of infusion reactions being much lower with the um, subcutaneous daratumumab, 12.7% versus 34% with the IV formulation. The one point I would make is the timing of the infusion reactions, and that was worthy, I think, of discussion. I'd be interested to see what people thought, um, especially I think Saad has had that experience. So, uh, you know, if it happens, again, you know, just, just like with IV data, it's, it, it happens inadvertently the first time patients are getting it. I think putting the numbers into perspective will be important. So, you know, on this trial, with the IV formulation, with having Monty Lucas on board, I think about 30% of the patients had an IRR on the IV arm and 12.5% on the sub-Q arm. So it's roughly one out of 10 patients who are going to uh, get it. If, if they get it, it's usually the first time around. I think the median time was about 210 uh, minutes or, or roughly a little over three hours. Um, so what, what our practice was um, to monitor the patients the first time they're getting the dose. Um, if they're doing fine, uh, you don't need to monitor them each time. You know, it, it can be given under five minutes. Um, and that three-hour monitoring would still be better than the eight hours that they're going to spend the first day that they're getting it. That was probably one of the most impressive parts of the slide where you saw the, for the subcutaneous administration, it was five minutes. But for the first infusion IV, it was 420 minutes. Right? That's a big difference. That's a big difference in terms of throughput through all of our infusion centers, et cetera. And it, I would say that everybody can pick up a book and can read a book for three hours after they get a subcutaneous injection in a chair in, in your clinic, and you can just want, monitor them and after that send them home and say, okay, that's the only time you have to bring your book to clinic. Mm -hmm. I think it's, <laughs> it's huge. It's going to make a big difference for us in our practice. And I think they showed some quality of life data too, or I think that time, I mean, it, it makes a huge difference for our patients, right? Um, our, our staff and everybody, of course, but mostly for our patients. So, so I would be curious, is everyone going to just switch their patients entirely to sub -Q -Dara when it becomes available? Um, I, I think that they should, if, if we would love to do that uh, from, again, a, a, a work throughput um, and patient convenience perspective. I think that there are going to be other issues at play, you know, drug pricing and how our pharmacies deal with with uh, that. So, and copays um, too, and, and copays as well. Yes, mm -hmm. I agree. Are you? Is everybody using ninety minute infusion? Yes. yes. Yeah, I, I was I was struck in I was in Europe recently how little ninety minute is used. Um, I think they're still following the label, um, which which I think does. I mean, five minutes is clearly better than ninety minutes, uh, but ninety minutes is not bad. Um, you can get through maybe a magazine instead of a book. Right? <laughs> <laughs>